Time now for our weekly news segment. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the Monero Utopia News section. Um, this time we're going to discuss, like always, CBDCs. Then we have some stuff in the US that's happening. And then we're going to take a break and talk about Monero because it gets quite depressing when we talk about CBDCs and how bad the world is is um, heading with its direction. So the first thing that we're going to discuss is Robert F. Kennedy Jr., which runs for presidency in the United States. He vows to back dollar with Bitcoin, exempt Bitcoin from taxes. This is very interesting. So. If we go in this article, uh, U.S. Democratic presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. unveiled a plan to exempt Bitcoin from capital gains tax, okay, when it is converted into U.S. dollars and to begin to bag the greenback with real finite assets, such as gold, silver, platinum, and, and Bitcoin. Uh, in the beginning, he said that the process would be very, very small, perhaps 1% of issued T uh, bills, but uh, backing dollars and U.S. debt obligations with hard assets could help restore Yes, it's absolutely is going to help restore strength back to the dollar because, okay, right in inflation and usher in a new era of American financial stability, peace and prosperity. Um, of course, it's going to because right now we have monopoly money, essentially. They can just print um, infinite amounts of it and then inflate the currency to the point of it being worth um, nothing, as, as we're seeing. And it happened in a lot of countries, you know, so the U.S. is not going to be um an exemption from this so um very interesting um our uh, robert f kennedy's uh thoughts when it comes to back in the dollar with bitcoin and all these things so um I, but it seems too good to be true you know so i'm not sure if he's actually going to become president things are too rigged um but um, of course it'll be cool if you know instead of bitcoin he use monero um, Monero is great when it comes to privacy, but it has so many other things that it, it is good for, such as um, the dynamic um, block size. So essentially, the more you use Monero, uh, the less you pay in fees and um, miners are being rewarded um, thanks to telemission. So things like that, you know, it doesn't have a set cap of 21 million coins, which I am not a fan of. Uh, but it's interesting. It's very um, interesting. And hopefully that is going to become president we'll see um but then so we have robert f kennedy fighting for us but on the opposite side we have the fed so uh fed dramatically speeds up u.s payments with fed now but downplays any tie to cbdc's so what is fed now fed now is a system that honestly is pretty cool i mean we need that whenever i want to send money to my friends and family you know internationally it takes days and some sometimes they need the money in that moment you know they don't they can wait a week or you know a couple of days to receive the money plus plus the fees uh which are high um but oh, i'm not sure how the fees are with fed now but essentially with this new system that now it conveys money almost instantly versus the hours or days it has conventionally taken in the us finally bringing the world's largest economy <laughs> in line with other countries uh, the central bank has denied that fed now is tied to any digital us dollar initiative this is what they keep saying and, and it's very important to stress this because we'll see in the future when there's going to be a Monerotopia news section in which we're going to be like, guys, the digital dollar has arrived. And it's going to be very amusing because they're saying that, oh, we're not going to have a CBDC probably. We'll see. We're still looking into it. Uh, Janet Yellen uh, is arguing that the U.S. should consider a central bank digital currency. Uh, the Fed now service, they say, is neither a form of currency nor a step towards eliminating any form of payment, including cash. So, um, but of course, the CBDCs are, are coming. And then I'll show you a couple examples from across the world and where the world is headed. And of course, the U.S. is going to follow through with CBDC. But first, let's discuss about um, this tweet from Jerry Brito. I'm sorry to have to say that Coin Center's case challenging Congress's expansion of Section 6050i of the tax code was dismissed as unright by the district court. So this law takes effect on January 1st, 2024 and will require citizens who are recipients of crypto payments, right? So if you receive crypto payments of $10,000 or more to report to the government, not just the transaction, right? How much? But the PII of the sender as well, all without a warrant. So if somebody sends you more than $10,000 in crypto, you need to report that person. Who sent you? Who's that person? to send you that much money. Um, 
But of course, in Monero, they can't even see who sent you the money, that the fact that the transaction even happened. So I really hope that if you're new to Monero, that you really hope to that that, that you, really, you really get to understand how important Monero is because they keep creeping into our assets, our money, our personal things. We're being brainwashed by social media all the time. They're pushing all this senseless inf information and they're manipulating what we think. So it's just all a bunch of manipulation. Hopefully you get to see more and more how important Monero is. Um, this close TV <laughs> sees that Monero is important and they put on their website that you can donate for Bitcoin and other coins, but then separate down below for Monero, use address or QR below. So there's Bitcoin and other coins and then there's Monero. Uh, Disclose TV as donations in Monero on their Telegram channel with over 400,000 followers. This is huge. This is written by my good friend Mano Crypto. Mano, if you're watching, all the best, man. Um, but yeah, so we discussed Robert F. Kennedy, Fed Now, um, 6050i of the tax code. So now let's discuss CBDCs, right? Because the US keeps n negating the fact that CBDCs are coming to the US as well. Uh, let's look at China. So in the past episode, we discussed the fact that you can uh, pay for railway systems, metro systems with CBDCs. They even created, uh, which doesn't work for iPhone 14 and up, it just works for, for Android as far as I understand, but it's a, it's, a co it's a SIM that you put in your phone. And even if your phone is dead, if you have no network connection, which is very, very important, you can actually still pay for the things that you want to purchase, which, see, you see, like when it comes to CBDC development, it's good to see what they are doing and take the good stuff and just put it in, into Monero. Like I would love to have... Uh, like a very thin card, something like we have today, like a credit card. Um, and then you can pay, you know, without power, without network connection, and you can modulate the amounts and how much you have in that card on, on an app on your phone. Because sometimes you're going to run out of battery on your phone or you're not going to have good network connection. Like I've been in the mountains of Albania with no internet connections or any way of anybody saving my life. <laughs> because, you know, it was just me and my friend in some mountains. So... Um, and then we actually had to make a purchase in those mountains with cash. Had we not had cash, we'd been stuck there. So in see, like in crazy situations like that, or not even, you need to be able to just pay with like your credit card. You never really have to charge it. It just just works in case your phone is dead. Uh, but the Civil Aviation Administration and China Merchants Bank said passengers can utilize the central bank digital currency to access new services via this platform. So. With China's CBDC, you can pay for rail railway networks, light rail connections, metro systems, uh, but now also business. Um, you can pay for flight tickets using the CBDC. Um, so they're obviously very, very helpful when it comes to this. Then China's digital yuan nears 250 billion transaction volume. Then if we go below, um, on July 19th, so this was three days ago, People's Bank of China Governor Yi Geng told the conference in Singapore that its central bank digital currency transacted 1.5, 1.8 trillion yuan as the end of June. He added there have been around 950 million transactions from roughly 120 million wallets since the digital yuan's initial January 2022 rollout, an average transaction uh, amounting to $260. So is it just China uh, in the world? No, Russia as well. The Russian CBDC by 2025. What's happening with the digital rubble? So now they're throwing some numbers, 2025 to 2027, 20, maybe like um, 2024, we're going to see the digital rubble uh, from, China, from uh, Russia, which is going to be very interesting because I think we discussed in one article that they want to back the digital rubble by gold, which... We'll see if that's going to happen. And uh, I just wonder what, how the digital rubble is going to be. I don't think citizens are going to have any privacy at all. Um, it's probably just going to be like the, the rest of them. So it's going to be interesting how CBDCs will differ around the world. Um, okay, so we discussed CBDCs, Robert F. Kennedy, um, all, all kinds of, of stuff where the world is headed. Now let's take a break and let's discuss the two last things for uh, this week, which is Monero stuff. Uh, Monero related articles. Uh, this is a proposal to make August 8th a Monero holiday, mask day, panty day. <laughs> so Untra Untraceable posted that, that on August 8th will be three years since uh, official McAfee auctioned his coronavirus mask for 27 Monero, uh, $2,600 then $4,400 uh, today. 
Should this be the Monero mass day or penny day similar to Bitcoin's pizza day? Um, yeah, why not? <laughs> That'll be fun. That'll be cool. And then we have Merceneros Monero services. So what is this? They're saying that we're excited to announce that starting today, our newly established cooperative Merceneros is open for business. We are devoted to providing top tier services for the Monero community. We're a dedicated team of Monero enthusiasts and professionals offering our services to everyone who opts for Monero as a preferred currency. And if we go on their website, Merceneros, the Monero cooperative you can trust, and you can get system administration services, programming, training, coaching, and sysadmin, Linux, OPSEC, InfoSec, hosting. Um, and this is the team, Redvice, Hudop, Burn, and Amenpa. Uh, cool. So guys, this was this week's uh, news uh, section. If you want to check the articles, the links are going to be in the description. Again, if you want to let me know something going on in the world and you want me to cover it, you can message me, you can message, you can tag Monero Utopia and um, I'm going to see it and uh, maybe it's going to make it into the news section. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next week. Have a good week, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.